What's up, guys? And welcome back to the Jenna and Julian podcast. Dink, 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 dink. This episode is brought to you by Bowl and Branch. Woo! Bowl and Branch uh, is a company that gives you luxury bedding at affordable prices. They cut out the middleman. There are no stores delivered right to your front door. You can start a free trial for 30 days. And if you don't like it, they will refund you all your money and you just send them back. But uh, we can speak firsthand. These are some of the most comfortable <laughs> sheets uh, I've ever touched. Yes. Go With to, my hands and my body yeah, ever touched. It's amazing. Go to uh, Bowl and Branch, B O L L and B R A N C H, bowlandbranch.com. Enter Jenna Julian as a product code and you get 50 bucks off your first set of sheets. Yeah, you actually put it in one of your vlogs of us opening that box and touching that. I did. We were just so enamored. <laughs> I vlogged about it. <laughs> It feels like you're at like a, a five star hotel and you're like, oh, wait, this is my bed. Where even am I even right now, even? Yeah, it's pretty great. Check them out. Yes, thank you, Bull and Branch. Yep. 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 So uh, we are 24 hours removed from the VMAs. Is, has it been that long? Yeah, I guess it has. Just about. Just about. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did a long time ago. It was podcast number five where we talked a little bit about. Um, MMA stuff, but also my relatively unpopular opinion on Kanye West. And uh, I wanted to do a follow-up to that, and I had planned on doing a follow-up prior to his speech last night, and mm -hmm. I'm glad that I waited, Yeah, because I do have some things to say about that. Yeah. And in summary, I guess, for those of you that maybe didn't watch that podcast, um, I basically just talked about how I feel like he's very misunderstood and that it's easy for us as consumers of some of the things that he's saying. We like his music. I think that that's a given. Most people agree that he makes good music. Um, but they have a hard time understanding what he's saying because he speaks very passionately and it's easier to just, you know, call it ego drivel that's coming out of his mouth than to maybe sit down and understand it. And uh, that podcast, we talked about that a bunch. Yeah. And even some of the feedback in that podcast was, you know, uh, that I'm sort of taking someone's words and then doing the worst thing you can do for someone that's an egomaniac by saying that he's he's right or that he's saying good things or he's doing good things. There were a lot of people that disagreed with what I said in that podcast, which is fine. And I understand your points and where you're coming from. Um, but I wanted to elaborate on that podcast. One, because there was a really interesting Huffington Post article that came out defending Kanye. And two, what he said last night at the VMAs. Yeah. So. Absolutely. I'm, honestly, that was uh, one of... The most, I would say, you know, personally enlightening discussions we've had on the podcast. I hadn't really, I mean, I know after hearing you talk about Kanye the way you did after our discussion, I really felt like I got to see a different side of things and you've 100%, you know, made it possible for me to like, you know, look at Kanye and, and, and try to see past what a lot of people s stop at. A lot of people see that sometimes he doesn't know how to um, articulate very well. He comes off very intense. Uh, and, and then they stop right there. And they, they judge him. They put the label right there. But I think if you look a little further, which I learned to do on our first podcast, you, uh, you're you able to... You're intrigued by Kanye a lot more. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to this discussion right now, though. So <laughs> Okay. And also, if we have time at the end, I would also like to talk about my controversial thoughts on the Kardashian family. Uh, because I am not a Kardashian hater whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's. I would like to put my two cents in there. And also, some people had tweeted at me uh, after the first Kanye podcast that they would like me to maybe dissect some other people. So if ever there's a person that maybe you don't understand, mm -hmm. tell them to me. And yeah, leave would, them in the comments. And we'll, I'd be we'll... more than happy to maybe try and break down some people, good or bad, in my opinion. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, anyways. Let's get into it. I mean, I did the same thing that Kanye does, which is I got very excited, and most of my notes are kind of all over the place. But uh, to start things off, 
I wanted to talk about, um, I forget what year it was, but it was, you know, 10 years ago at this point, uh, the charity for the Hurricane Katrina when um, Kanye was on TV with, what's his face? Mike, Mike Myers? Mike Myers. Yeah. And he blurted out on this, you know, charity thing where they're asking for money for Hurricane Katrina. And uh, Kanye just blurted out, George Bush doesn't care about black people. Yeah. And um, the article in the Huffington Post that was written by, um, I will find his name, give me a second. Okay, I won't find it. Um, whatever, you can find it, Google it. It's good. Um, basically is giving credit to Kanye in hindsight because Kanye got roasted for saying that. Mm -hmm. It was not the plan. He went off script. He just, you know, for a moment in time, decided I have a platform right now and I have something to say. And most people remember that he said George Bush doesn't care about black people. Yeah. What most people do not remember him saying is he had also pointed out that I hate the way the media portrays us. There was a picture of a black couple and the caption said that they had just looted a bunch of food and water. And then there was a, a picture of a white couple and it said that they had just, they were carrying supplies basically. And you know, they're both carrying bags of what mm -hmm. appears to be food to yeah. try and take shelter yeah. and Kanye had also along with saying George Bush doesn't care about black people had said I, I hate the way that they portray us in the media and yeah. he pointed out something you know that most people were completely unwilling to point out at the time mm -hmm. while that was happening mm -hmm. you're accusing the president of racism basically yeah, you're okay. accusing a lot of media outlets of racism which is you know very important now in the time being in the black black lives matter yeah. this is all like at the forefront of our consciousness whereas 10 years ago <laughs> Kanye West you know, we had this conversation last time. Maybe you went about something in a way that wasn't the most polite yeah, or respectful. For sure. He could have found a different way to say that, but he said it in a way that made us all shut up for a second and mm -hmm. like, oh my God. Shocked us into listening. Did he just say that? Did yeah. he really just say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, the article goes on to say that George Bush had called that the low point of his presidency. Yeah. You know, not. 9-11 or like a lot of other things he called Kanye calling him a racist basically is the worst thing that happened in his presidency which take that for what it is yeah. you have someone that is freely and openly speaking their mind on a public stage and people crucified him for it yeah you know mm -hmm. didn't Obama call him an idiot like people were really really on him for that and another thing the article does is that it says, you know, the, the people at the time were pissed. They don't know what to do. Um, that Mike Myers was kind of upset because he didn't know that Kanye was going to say that. Yeah. Uh, everybody was sort of panicked and flustered. And yet now, in hindsight, everyone's really, really glad that he said that because Kanye was right. And I think, um, not to transition yet into the VMAs, but... It was very important for someone on that level to be using an unfiltered voice about something that they cared about. And I don't think that you ever necessarily have to be right, that you have to be wrong or anything. I think what's important is that you're freely and openly speaking your mind on a stage at a given point of time that is so admirable and necessary to our culture all the time forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know that, that I'm not bringing it to the VMAs yet, but he did say something last night very, very similar to that. And he's always preached that he will die for people's rights to be able to say what they need for for artists to be able to express themselves, even their, if their opinion isn't welcome or popular. He wants to be the force of change in that department. And it, it frustrates me on so many levels seeing the backlash the internet has had last night of of his speech because nobody, you know, he said some very, very real ass things in that time period. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't an Obama speech where it flows and then you're just standing up and cheering by the end, right. but it's, that's not Kanye. He has so many ideas floating around his head that he sometimes like, you know, doesn't, you know, get it outright. But he said that last night. He said, I want to be, 
I want to be the force of change so artists can express themselves. I want to be some example for people to know that they can say whatever they're feeling mm. and still be on a huge stage and be popular, be famous, and still be able to talk and have an opinion. Yeah, and before we get there to all of that, I would just like to point out that in the last podcast, we talked a lot about how he has great ideas and it's difficult for people to understand what he's saying because he speaks so passionately and the the biggest way that we get his messages are through his music because he's more effective at communicating them in that way. Yeah. And so it's become our cultural norm to sort of laugh at this loud clown. Do you know what I mean? Like whenever he speaks in person, it's it's socially acceptable for us to laugh at him because it's Kanye being Kanye. Yeah. It's not as socially acceptable to say, yeah, Kanye said something and it really resonated with me. Yeah. We we get cuz I'm one of those people, he what he says resonates with yeah. me. Yeah. And, you know, gotten a lot of flack for that, and I think a lot of people have in the past by yeah. saying, you know, I genuinely understand what he's saying yeah. right now. Yeah. And I think that it's important that we recognize you know, in hindsight, what he said about Hurricane Katrina and yeah. what he said openly and blurted out on stage. If, you know, we look back in time, yeah. the the author of that article said, you know, I don't even think Kanye would have done what Kanye did, which is important to think about. Yeah. What would we have done in that situation? We would No one would have said anything. No one would have made any sort of social commentary. Yeah. And I think that it's just to say something overarching right now. I think that Art is important. I think that artists are important. I think that uh, your job as an artist, if you are an artist in any capacity, it is your job to hold a mirror up to society and be an honest voice of truth, yeah. no matter what, no matter yeah. how much it hurts you as a person. Yeah. And I think when Kanye would, I have like a little bit of a transcript of things I want to talk about from okay. what he touched on last night. But what he was saying when he's, you know, basically saying, "I'm, I die, I'm going to die for this art. I'm yeah. dying for yeah. this art," yeah. is that he's looking at this room full of people that are willing to make art but aren't willing to have the things that come along with being an artist that is you know people might hate you they might boo you in a in a baseball game people might tell you to your face oh you're not that bad he's showing remorse for some of the things that he's done but still saying you know what's worth it more than Changing. that, telling the truth, yeah. being an honest voice, yeah. having no filter. Yeah, he's speaking to a room of people who play a game that he refuses to play. Right. That's why I think you know most of us sitting and watching it from our televisions at home, we're kind of laughing as he takes this 13-minute speech to you know talk to us about a bunch of things. But he's really giving a big fuck you to everyone in that room. Yeah. That's like I'm the only one that's willing to stand up here and yeah. tell the truth all the time. Yeah. And you guys are, you know, worrying about who's getting an award and who's not getting an award. Yeah. And everyone in here has forgotten what the point is. Yeah. And that's to hold a mirror up to ourselves, hold a mirror up to society, to be true artists and to speak our mind. Yeah. And I'm the only one that's using my fucking mouth. And everybody else just wants to get a contract with fucking Nike and, yeah. you know, do whatever yeah. Yeah. Em endorsements to make as much money as they can no, you're right. and that they've completely lost what it is right. to be an artist yeah. and so uh, you know I'll go through that in a second but to get this out of the way off the top I don't care about him deciding to run for president I don't know if he's even going to follow up with that or see that all the way through that doesn't matter to me what matters to me is that he has gone so far to say you know I'm just going to take a stab at politics motherfuckers until everyone has to to listen to me yeah everyone has to listen to what i have to say and by you know claiming that you're going to run for president is a perfect way even if I, I imagine if that you know happened all the way through that it, he ran for anything that he's just going to get slammed and made fun of and people will laugh at him but it forces people to listen to what he has to say. Yeah. It's not just an interview with Sway anymore. It's not just him on Jimmy Kimmel anymore. You have to listen to what I have to say, good or bad. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you kind of nailed it right there where it's like, that's the point of him saying he's going to run for president. He just wants people to know that he's going to get his word out. Right. No one matter way, what, one way or another. It's not about winning the presidency. It's no. about getting people to fucking listen. But isn't, if you put it in that context, in your brain, isn't it 
you know, they take that I'm willing to die for my art, whatever. They take that one liner. They think he's comparing himself to Jesus or, you know, just being Kanye to thinking in an extreme level that makes no sense to the rest of us. But if you think about it in that way, that he's willing to commit social suicide in a way to get his thoughts and his truth into the word yeah. world, that really is yeah. dying for your art and your craft and your truth. Yeah. Because, you know, there's uh, plenty of studies where uh, you look at social shaming and that's effect on people. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what that, I think her name was Justine or something when she had tweeted something along the lines of, you know, I'm flying to Africa, uh, hope I don't get AIDS, good thing I'm white. And it was a joke, obviously, because no one in their right mind would say that. But that's sort of reflecting on white privilege, our culture. And she just got dragged through the, it was trending on Twitter. People could not wait for her to get what? off the plane to tell her to kill herself when was this? a while back. Hmm. But there's been a lot of really nice articles on that by describing how much social shaming is one of the worst forms of punishment that you can give somebody, right? Yeah. Like it, and on your little triangle of basic needs, you food, shelter, water, uh, it, it, um, where am I going? The social acceptance. You need acceptance from your peers right after your basic needs. Yeah. And then you have whatever self-actualization, figuring out where you fit into the world. Mm -hmm. But it is so important that people don't feel shunned by society. And that is a, an incredibly, it's it's a primitive form of punishment. It's a terrible thing to feel. Nobody wants to feel that. And for Kanye to say that he is willing to do that, he's willing to let people laugh at him and slam him. They know what they're, he knows what they're gonna do to him yeah. if he runs for president or if he you know, puts himself out there any more than he already is. He knows what will happen to him socially. That, that speaks is, to what, how much he wants to get this across. Just his truth, just his thoughts. I gotta say, it's if, incredibly if I may, admirable to me. I agree. If I may take a second to go say ahead, something, go ahead. Um, I, I gotta say, it, it, it's incredibly frustrating and kind of difficult for me to watch sometimes the way he is laughed at. Um, I I identify, maybe not on the most personal level, but I identify with someone who is very very passionate, yet is so kind of hindered by that in a way of you know not able to communicate well and it frustrates me to no end and it, it does make me really sad like last night uh watching him made the line about getting booed by sixty thousand people and people laughed in the audience i, I really just that's kind of hard for me to watch that's the, not the right way he's not trying to be perceived but deserves to be perceived deserves to be welcomed or recognized or reacted to and you know it's easy to laugh at and it's easy to make jokes about his polarizing opinions and way of talking but it, i gotta say it's one of the most disheartening things that the moment you try to take kanye seriously people are laughing and i have a tweet that i literally just retweeted about an hour ago did you see it no hank green tweeted oh i already favorited it <laughs> three hours ago it says apparently if you're sincerely thankful to kanye west a portion of people will nonetheless assume that you're being sarcastic and he uses the word thankful and i think that's so so right on point well did you read his two tweets before that that he had described why he was thankful he said that you know i completely 100 percent agree with kanye's opinion on award shows and that Hank Green's been offered piles full of money to make a VidCon based award show and that he's never wanted to. So yeah. he's well, thankful actually, I, I to didn't Kanye see the context. for no. his opinion. I didn't see the context. That makes it that makes it better. But it, it still it's it still stands that when when you do feel like he is doing some good with his words on the stage that he gets, you're automatically like taken as, oh that's funny. Good joke. Right. And that's so, that's just hard. I hate it. And I think it's it's just one of those things. Like, I, I, I watched completely in silence all 15 minutes of however long his speech was last night. I just I just sat there and watched. Like, I, I made a couple comments. Like, why are people laughing? Why are people laughing? Like, this is making me sad and uncomfortable that people are laughing right now. And he's up there just, like, trying so hard to let you know how big of a middle finger he's trying to give everyone in the audience right now for being such sheep.
in this industry where nobody stands up, nobody makes it a point to be listened to or be an individual or have ideas. Right, 100%. And I think that there are artists that do it delicately. They they give out their opinions here and there. Yeah. But he is right in the sense that there is nobody as big as he is that's willing to use their voice because there's too much to lose. Yeah, and you know, I think it's going to take, you know, I don't know what the result is going to be, but it's going to take a person who, who is very well respected to just one day say, I agree with Kanye, guys. Like, everyone who follows me, whether it's a politician, an actor, someone massive, and someone respected, it's going to take them saying, hey, guys, this, guy, fuck this, guy's, fucking, this guy's fucking saying real shit right now. Can you just shut up, stop laughing, and listen to him? It's going to take something like that for people to be like, whoa, maybe we should take him seriously, because for some fucking reason, nobody wants to take Kanye seriously. And I understand that it's easy because there are a lot of reasons he gives you not to take him seriously because of the way he conducts himself. I understand that he shoots himself in the foot sometimes, but that doesn't mean that a person doesn't deserve your attention or your honest, just listen, listen to the person, listen to the man, your ears, give him, just give him that. Like, And, and again, going back to the first podcast where, you know, we boiled down that it's easier to laugh off someone that you perceive as a little bit loopy doopy. Like it's easier to just laugh and say Kanye is being Kanye. It's much harder to sit down and try and decipher what he's saying. Yep. And I- I'm just forever thankful to people that use their unfiltered voices because I think that when you're an artist, you owe that to the culture. Yeah. You owe it to us. If you are going to make your living, make creative stuff, use your voice, use your brain. And don't, you know, when he talked about how our kids aren't going to be owned by corporate America and corporations, he's basically saying to everyone in the fucking audience, like, fuck you guys and your fucking money and everything that you're trying to do right now. You're being selfish. You're making yourselves money instead of being an honest voice for the people. Listen to the kids. Listen, Listen to, to the, the kids. kids. Believe in something bigger than what you are. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I wrote some other things about his speech that I can, you know, whatever. But I, I'm, I'm, I think that it's so important that we have someone on his scale that regardless of whether or not you agree with him, the fact that he is using his voice is so important and so rare and so uncommon in our society that we should be really, really thankful that somebody has the fucking balls to do it. Yeah, I think what you said that it's easy to laugh off something that appears crazy is is so right. Like People get uncomfortable by by his veracity is that even a word i don't know but his his fierce yeah. presence like when he gets up in a, in a place where people are listening and he doesn't fucking sit there and make a joke or make the easy quip that every fucking one and their mother does at those stupid right. incestuous award shows right. it's just like he gets up there and he just literally does whatever is on his brain at that moment and like the people are like whoa this is weird let's laugh at it you know it's like but isn't that everyone's goal though to be more present to live more in the moment like that's your goal of life it's people's goal when they're tweeting out monday motivation on twitter but when it comes down to it they're not going to fucking walk the walk when it comes down to when the mic's in their hand and people are looking at them and the room is silent they are going to blend in that's what everyone does and that's why kanye is who kanye is i had read that mtv had given him a two minute slot for that acceptance and after given all of you know his past and how much he really does just get dragged through the mud for the things that he says what is the easy path to do right now stand up there say thank you act like you're you know so happy just play the game Kanye, everything's yeah. gonna be fine. Yeah. What does he do? He, he Kanye, take, he, he only takes, does Kanye. He takes the two minutes he knows he has and he gives it At, plus he, double to his applause. Yeah, no, he took like he, a four it, minute it was applause. a twelve minute or thirteen minute speech. Yeah, so he doubles the time he knew he had and he let everyone clap for that amount of time. Two, two and twelve is not double. <laughs> No, he six doubled, times longer. He than doubled he the amount of time he had. Oh, and just got just applause. got an applause yeah. for that, and then the rest of the time he did what he wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my notes were um, there were a couple of publications already that had made you know quote funny videos being like because I looked on YouTube. 
because I wanted to sort of write this translation of everything that he was saying. And I could, only, just looking at the time of these videos, they were one minute, one minute, one minute, two minutes. And I'm like, well, his speech was 13 minutes. Where's his speech? And most of them that said Kanye West's VMA speech, they had made these, you know, funny edits of him just going, bro, 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 I'm running for president 2020. And I thought, how fucking disrespectful. And what a joke. Shame on you for not even giving him any credit for speaking his mind. If, if anything, that's the reason why I feel so passionately about making these podcasts about talking about Kanye, because it is so important. Oh, fucking, I will say it to the death that it, people use their unfiltered voices in positions of power or when they have a platform of people listening. So important. And how dare you boil down what he has to say to just, bro, 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 I'm running for president. Fuck off. Fuck you. Anyways, I will keep going. Well, Jenna, we what? live in the generation of the easy click, and that's what that is. So. Clickbait. Clickbait. Um, I said that the first part of his speech, he was talking about having remorse for making decisions that he had in the past. Yeah. You know, would I have worn a leather shirt? Would I have drank a half bottle of Hennessy? You know, all of this stuff. And he sounds almost like, you know, he would say, you know, maybe I wouldn't have done things the way that I had. Yeah. But thank you, Kanye, that you did. First of all, that's my response. Second of all, he goes from there by saying, did I smoke something before I came here? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So he's basically acknowledging that maybe he could have remorse for the things that he's done in the past. But he's got something more important to talk about. I have something <laughs> more important to talk about right now. Yeah, I got high before I came here. Yeah, yeah I just admitted that I got high before I came here. Yeah. And I want everyone to fucking listen to me. He talked about how he feels like a scapegoat, which yeah. we already talked about. About how everyone else in the room that's a, you know, quote unquote artist is really just trying to be a small corporation. They're trying to be a promotional machine. They're trying to make as much money as possible. They're serving their themselves instead of serving the people by giving them a voice or holding a mirror up to society. You're, you're failing as an artist. Yeah. You're winning at being selfish. Yeah. He's angry at the system in which he became popular, which I think is common and fair, but most people don't talk about that. They, you know, He climbs this ladder of becoming a musician, and once you get to a certain place in that ladder, he turns around and realizes that he hates all the fucking games he has to play just to do what he wants in life. Yeah. Isn't that the only reason you become an artist? Because you want to do what you want to do. You want to make what you want to make. Yeah, but no one ever play. No one ever does that. That's 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 what he is doing. No one ever gets into it, reaches the top, and then remembers, hey, this is not why I got into it. I need to be myself and not play the game. I, playing the game is like the best way to put it. People who say the right thing and have the right managers telling them what to say and what not to associate themselves with. And Kanye is just like. That is the worst thing ever. Right. That that's, that's institution is bad. Right. That is what's creating this environment where everyone is so terrified to do anything besides go to award shows and make money and, and do everything that they know is going to just further them on this path. And Kanye is like, um, I'm going to go over here. And what is everyone on this path for? Right. Like, do you see the end? Everyone's everyone's got their money and they die. Right. Like, <laughs> To speak for something, right. believe in something, you know, right? Because it, it is true. Like y you have to believe that so many people who get into the arts or music or whatever are at one point in their lives incredibly passionate people and free and free, and they have an opinion and they believe in something, and it comes out in their early music. So, how many people who make music do you like? Oh, you know, their old shit is like way more passionate. You know, it, it happens so much because once they make it big, it's like that doesn't fly anymore. Their and voice they, gets stifled. Their voice gets stifled. People are telling them different things, and it never ends up being the same person who got into it. And Kanye is just saying that to everyone, like everyone here, the video music awards right. full of successful musical artists. Why are you here? Right. And I had I had written that. Um, OK, 
I, well, here, here's what I wrote. <laughs> He's angry at the system but, uh, in which he became popular. He jumps topic to topic, and it's a little bit hard to follow. So people, it's easy for people to, again, say that this is ego drivel, et cetera, um, even though I think he did a much better job last night of trying to stay calm through most of it yeah. and at least make some points that we were easily able to decipher in the moment without having to go back and really try and understand what we're saying. I got it. I got the whole thing as he was saying it. Yeah. Um, I think he's saying, listen to the kids because he is sick of an outdated machine. Because the music industry or, and a lot of entertainment industries have become so corporate, so like, you know, you, you have to be X, you have to fit into a certain box. He's so angry with this outdated machine that everything has become that he keeps pointing the fucking microphone at the kids and being like, listen to the kids. He's talking to his fellow creators, yeah. artists, the people that work in, in the music industry. He's talking to everyone, and he's talking to us as consumers. Stop buying bullshit. Stop listening to bullshit. Stop feeding into bullshit, because we're smarter than that. The, with the internet, we're a lot smarter than people give us credit for. Yeah. Even if you're 13 years old, which I made this point in my last video, you know, according to a lot of religions and science books, you're an adult. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen to the people that are there buying your music. They want your truth, but you're not giving it to them. So they're going to settle for your fucking perfume and your clothing line. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking piss. I'm so I'm fucking pissed off right now. All right. Why don't you cool off for a sec? We'll take a break. No, you're good. But also take a that quick break just to um, shout out our okay. little sponsor for the week. Go ahead. Um, so Bowl and Branch, guys, uh, if you are looking for new bed sheets. Check them out. Go to bowlandbranch.com. See what they're about. They're much more than uh, just a sheet delivery service. They uh, they make it a point to let you know and also to make public. They treat their workers very fairly. Uh, 250 mil workers. They're all compensated fairly. Factory conditions are certified and fair. Uh, a portion of each uh, bedding that is bought it's goes... But yeah, it goes to fight underground sex trafficking. And that's a huge, huge, huge problem today uh, that a lot of people don't think about because it's not in the first world and it's not in your face, but it, it is. exists. It is. Well, it's not in your face. It's not in our daily lives, but it exists and it exists right around us. So um, a company that's willing to you know, designate money and time into fighting uh, shit like that. That's uh, that's that's something I appreciate. I agree, and everybody's got to buy some bed sheets, so why not put it towards a good cause? That's true. There's been over nine thousand rescued victims just from mm. um, this cause towards fighting it. Um, nine thousand three hundred something, which is huge. Wow. They're putting their money where their mouth is. Bullandbranch.com. That's B O L L and B R A N C H dot com. Enter Jenna Julian as your product code. You get fifty bucks off of your first pair of sheets or set of sheets, rather. And uh, you can also just do a free trial, guys. And for a whole month, you get to sleep on those sheets. And at the end of the month, if you don't like it, send it back. Get all your money back. And it also feels like you're sleeping in butter, like actual butter. Well, we haven't. It's I mean, wonderful. We we have, what our, our sheets are how old? Like pretty pretty old. Pretty old. <laughs> so we went from that to like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and it felt like we were sleeping in clouds. So really well-made stuff. Thank you to Bowling Branch. Check them out. Thank you, Bowling Branch, for supporting us. Um, I mean, I think we've said a lot about Kanye and, and a lot about his speech at the VMAs. I, for one, really appreciated him again having an opportunity to just mail it in and, you know, finally give up mm -hmm. to... Uh, being misunderstood and you know having people make fun of him he has every opportunity every day to wake up and be like you know what i'm tired i'm tired of telling the truth when no one will listen to me i'm mm -hmm. tired yeah. i want to go to bed yeah. you know it'll be easy if i just shut my mouth and play the game and that he wakes up every fucking day man and refuses to he has refused to take any other path other than his own truth, which I think is so important and rare. Yeah, you know, I think I think uh, you notice you notice his impact um, on certain levels that you really have to pay attention to find. But say for last night, Big Sean was accepting an award for his collaboration with Kanye, and he took a moment to say, just just so everyone knows, I would not have any sort of opportunity that I have right now without Kanye West. Like he opened a door for me that has led to an entire career, has led to all the success for me, but he is why I'm here. And I think 
that was just like a small peek into how much he's respected within the industry, like within the artists. And I think so many people respect him. But like even just saying that much is like, like do that. No, no one's even, you know what I'm saying? Like right. Big Sean took a moment to say thank you for opening the door for me. But I think a lot of people are almost like just afraid to associate with Kanye West by saying something like that. Like they're afraid that if they say, hey, you know, on an interview at a radio show on tour, uh, I'm, I'm very inspired by Kanye West and I always have been. And he continues to be someone that makes me really proud to be in the music industry. They're afraid that if they say that, they are going to have to deal with shit that is attached to Kanye. And that's such insanity. And I think a lot of people in the industry, you know, do respect him, but not not enough to be like, hey, openly associated with him. Right. They're, and they're scared. People they're are scared. scared. And, and I understand because Kanye is a scary guy. I mean, and he's a, he's a very very strong presence, and he doesn't give a fuck. Kanye so I, doesn't scare me at all. But you know what I'm saying? Like the mass mm-hmm. amounts of people are going to look at Kanye and say, "Yeah, I'm inspired by him," but I'm a little scared to associate with my, myself with him. Right, because they want to take the easy path. Well, they in want life. to do what he <laughs> like hates, but at the same time, they do they do appreciate his, him and in, in what he does in a sense. Right. That's why I think the again the general consensus is that. Most people in, that enjoy hip hop music thoroughly enjoy Kanye's music, yeah. and then that's where their opinion stops. He's even so just, much more even than that. just talking with yeah. other people. And when we made that podcast, and I knew that that's it's an unpopular opinion to have, yeah. but I just have vast amounts of respect for Kanye for using his voice, and I think that. Most people, if they take a hard look at things that he said and really try and understand them, yeah. that he's not, you know, spewing garbage. He's yeah. telling truth bombs. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's difficult for people to realize that in the present. And it's also difficult for people to realize how important people speaking freely is. Yeah, it's like you have to understand that. Like these people who exist in the world of music who don't, on purpose, they don't associate with Kanye West because they're afraid of the backlash or they're afraid of the association or whatever. They're afraid of that causing them to stray off their money-making business path. But the whole idea of Kanye is not that. So... Either you like him and you want to associate with him and you want to tell people you were inspired by him so you can be on his team and show people that there is more than this, what we're doing tonight dressed up in our tuxes. I'm, I'm kind of getting lost, but what I'm trying to say is like people who want to say they appreciate Kanye but are afraid to be next to him. You're the reason why he is so frustrated. Right. Like he. That's a, that's a very so important concerned. word, Julian. That is a very important word that you just said. He is so frustrated. He's been frustrated for years. Like, yeah. do people not realize that when he does these things on a larger scale, you're speaking openly to the general public. He's already so frustrated yeah. from years of not being understood. Why even bother talking? Why bother? Yeah. Why bother talking to your feather, your fellow artists when I, I already know you guys don't get it? You're not willing to stand next to me to vouch for me to say you understand what I'm about, but you're more than willing to go online and buy my Yeezys after you make fun of my fucking fashion line for years and years and years. Right? Exactly. <laughs> You make fun of me, you make fun of Kim, you make fun of everything I'm about. Five years later, ten years later, you realize that I was telling the truth. You realize that I was making something cool. He he is only, you know, he's like five, ten years ahead of the rest of the people. And it takes him that long to get credit for something he said a decade ago. And in ten years, How infuriating. hopefully, people will look back on this year's VMAs and say, wow. Nobody fucking listen to him. How infuriating. I would be infuriated. I don't ever blame someone like that for being infuriated ever. Yeah. And I would be very mad, you know, when you look around seemingly at your peers and everyone's like, yeah, I'd love to make a song with you. But then, you know, can you do a bunch of other stuff for me because we're friends as people? No, sorry, Kanye can't do that. Uh, My management said it's bad for the brand can't be associated with you but i'll have you tweet out our new song together please <laughs> i'm not saying that everyone is like that just, he, he probably no, but has, a lot of fucking people I, are you right, know they he are. probably has plenty of artists that are ride or die yeah, with yeah. him 
Um, I think it was important what Big Big Sean said about. I him. do too. That was that was I really appreciated that. I don't know too much about Big Sean other than like just listening to his music, but that that was one thing that I really liked uh, that he did. Yeah, for sure. and again, my whole point of the first podcast, my whole point of this podcast discussing him is just how important and how rare it is for people to have unfiltered thoughts and ideas on a giant scale. For sure. And that regardless of what comes out of his mouth, because he's speaking his mind, we owe it to him to try and understand. Yeah, because he's taking a risk and he's being brave. Huge risk. And to, he, in he's order taking to speak. a risk and he already knows the consequences are bad. Well, because he's faced them before. Right. <laughs> he his faces them every day. Yeah, exactly. And so he th- there's no like, there's no example of someone putting their money where their mouth is more than Kanye does. Think about how frustrating that is though. Like you know that the consequences of using your own voice and thoughts is bad in everyone's mind that would make that would make you want to shut up and never use your voice again like i've i've made plenty of videos where i say something i speak openly and freely and people do not like what you have to say it, i understand that feeling of being like i don't want to speak up ever again yeah. it's like that tallest poppy australian you know, in a field of poppies, you never want to be the tallest poppy because yeah. that's the one that gets clipped and cut yeah. off. Yeah. That's what Rome told me, huh, Rome? But I feel like Kanye has had every opportunity to decide to shut his mouth. He doesn't. And what does that say about our society, though, about our culture, that we publicly shame people for using their voices, which is disgusting and wrong? I don't like it. Yeah. I think that everyone needs to take opportunities to have a free and open time to speak their mind, to speak their thoughts. Maybe you do know that the consequences of it are bad, but it's important that people use their voices. And that's all I care about. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's, it's so easy to blend in and laugh at people who How dare you fucking people on Twitter and whoever, whatever, you're more than entitled to your opinions, but don't ever shame someone for using their voice. Yeah. That's the opposite of, you know, progression. We're, no, we're not going to get anywhere yeah. with people just staying quiet and playing by the rules. Yeah. That's not how it works. Yeah. We need people to speak up. Yeah. I'm thankful to someone for speaking up. I wish he would speak up more. So, you know, even if he doesn't follow through with running for president, which, you know, is neither here nor there to me, hopefully we see more of Kanye using his voice because I appreciate it. Well, yeah, I appreciate it too. And I appreciate being able to talk um, about how much I appreciate someone who is fucking brave like Kanye, and I appreciate seeing a tweet from Vlog Brothers, Hank Green, talking about how he is thankful for Kanye, and for some reason that means he's a joke, or that opinion gets laughed at. It makes me happy to see that, like, you know, not that it ever was a thought in my mind, but it makes me happy to see that we're not the only ones sitting here saying, thank you, Kanye. Right, <laughs> you I know? agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to transition, okay. because I think you know that's what I wanted to say about Kanye. Yeah, and um, guys, let uh, let's be civil, but let us know in the comments your thoughts, your thoughts on last night, and w- where you stand. Yeah, and if you, know? you have arguments against what I think, I understand your points and I understand why you say that. And we'll them. read the comments. Yes. We can have a discussion. Yeah, and please don't feel like those opinions are not welcome because they are. Yeah. The only thing that I ask is that you don't turn it into a personal attack against anyone else in the comments. Doesn't doesn't help anyone. Doesn't that's not why we're here. Right. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about that I we touched like for two seconds in the in the first Kanye podcast is Kim is Kim no. and I realized um, after talking to a couple of you know YouTube people Vine people that I have a relatively unpopular opinion about the Kardashians as mm-hmm. well yeah. so I wanted to share that with you and if you don't like the Kardashians you can go ahead and you know just turn this podcast off but I do think that it's a theory that I hope you would want to listen to because let's hear it I, it took me a little bit to come to the realization yeah. okay so this is my opinion I think that Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian family are sort of the future of entertainment and I think that they have redefined what entertainment is. I think that they have redefined and made a new path that didn't exist anymore that you can be your own brand and you can be yourself for a living. And I think that's important to those of us that work or are in the new media space and without 
Kim and without the Kardashians, it would be a vastly different space than it is now. Mm-hmm. And I know this is a lot like squinting at a painting, <laughs> hoping there's something there, and that it's going to take me a little bit to get from oh, here, here to here. I'm hearing you. Let's go. Okay. So this is what I wrote. <laughs> It might be a little bit scatterbrained, but this is what I wrote. I feel like the history of entertainment goes as such, right? Songs, stories, once we get some written languages, we can have some stories, right? It might be on like a totem pole or some shit, but we have stories. Then radio, film, television, internet. And the underlying line of all of that is that most of it has to do with humanity. It has to do with being a human, the feelings that you feel. Great stories are great stories regardless of when they happened or how they occur, but we like the ones that we can relate to. So, you know, a story about a caveman hanging out with a fucking, you know, saber-toothed tiger is not really going to do much for us at this point. But, you know, at the time, it was a banging story. Anyways, we are infatuated with real people as a culture. I think that that's what makes stories powerful. That's what makes the internet powerful, television powerful, anything powerful. We as people are consumed with other people. We want to feel what it's like to be alive. We want to know what exists. We're very curious by nature, which is why I think social media is one of the most powerful things that there is because it literally just gives you a look into someone else's life. And the more you live your life, the more I want to know your life. It's fucking intense. Yeah. Anyways, TV went from television trying to be film, you know, short, shorter form storytelling, to reality television, which was considered the trash of television and still is to many people. It's trash. Why would I watch this? I hate this. This is garbage. We've sunk to a new low in terms of being entertained. I wholeheartedly disagree. I think the reality television was a gigantic step towards just getting closer to what people are interested in, which is just human beings. And I think that we will forever be more and more fascinated with more raw, more real. I, if, it, if I could live, you know, watch you live 24-7, I will. Now I have Periscope. Yeah. Now I don't even need mm-hmm. internet jump yeah. cuts. I can watch you doing something live. Mm-hmm. It's a voyeuristic way of living, but it just feeds our human nature and that we're genuinely curious as to how other people live their lives. What is your life like? Mm-hmm. Especially if you're in a unique per- position like the Kardashians. You have this gigantic family. You guys are funny. You guys are beautiful. You guys are rich. You're entertaining. Why wouldn't I be interested in what your life is? Why wouldn't I follow you on Instagram? I'm genuinely curious when you wake up what your life looks like. Mm-hmm. I want to know. I think that if the Kardashians didn't exist, if she wasn't a punching bag for our culture and society, if we didn't relentlessly make fun of her and she didn't relentlessly give everyone the fucking middle finger and keep doing whatever she wanted, that we would have a very difficult time as people of the internet or people that are trying to make a living out of being themselves if Kim Kardashian hadn't already paved this path. Mm-hmm. I think that there are plenty of people on the internet that have, you know, refused to be cheapened. You know, we're not novelties. We're not vehicles for promotion. We're not here to just push something to a bunch of eyeballs. We're here to make cool stuff and do whatever we want. And I think that there's a lot of people on the internet that have fought those battles by not just, you know, selling us out and selling us down the river, or whatever the fuck. But Kim Kardashian has been doing that same thing on a parallel level on a different medium. She did it through television. And you know, say what you want about her sex tape and whatever, and I think that people like to boil it down to that. And like I said in the last podcast, because we can't fit her talents or what she does in a box, her success is demeaning to us. Do you know what I mean? Because I can't say Kim Kardashian is this or is is this. So therefore, she makes X amount of money or she, you know, does this for a living. Mm. Because I can't understand mm-hmm. what you do for a living, the uh, the fact that you are able to make money off of it is demeaning to me and everything that I know. Mm. It really sort of tears us down as people and has to redefine what maybe success is. Is it being the most famous woman in the world? Because I think there's an argument there that she absolutely is. Mm. Is it making millions and millions of dollars? I, you know, some people would certainly define su- success as that. I think that there are so many facets to how she is successful, why she is successful, and what she's doing 
to be that person. And in essence, she's just being herself for a living. And if you look at, you know, leave out all the like really, really, really serious musicians, actors, whoever in the world, those people that want to do that for a living. Take all of the people that are sort of getting into things for the wrong reasons. They just want people to pay attention to them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or say, you know, you're an actor, but you fucking hate it and you wish you could do something else. She is doing, in theory, what everyone could do if, if or would do if, if they could. If I could be myself for a living, I would. Because that's fucking awesome. Yeah, I think uh, what you said at the beginning about how, oh, right there, too, about how, bef- I mean, when, when, when did Kim start to rise in popularity? When, do you know what year... Well, it was, I don't know what year, but she was friends with Paris Hilton. And so would you say like 2009, 2008? I, I'm not good at this. Okay, cause I don't, whatever. I'm re- years are starting to blur together for me. Okay, so. <laughs> it really took off during Keeping with the keeping Up with the Kardashians, which, which was begun after her sex tape and stuff like that. And that had begun, okay, we don't, okay. Yeah. Either way. Whether, you know, I, I just think it's a very interesting parallel you drew to what Kim Kardashian does and has done and continues to do successfully, wildly successfully, and the term being yourself for a living. Because in a sense, I define what I do as being myself for a living. Right. And a lot of people on the internet like to pride themselves that they are unfiltered, they're vloggers, they show their life, they do things on Snapchat, like they are basically them and they get paid to be them in multiple different ways. And It's amazing how, you know, the internet has gone from who are these idiots to, okay, they're not that bad to holy shit, they're very talented and they're changing the game. You know, it's like, we're not there yet or whatever, but it, Kim has like been doing that for years. It's like the way that you put that kind of lit that bulb up in my brain that Kim, I mean, I knew that she was an incredible businesswoman and she figured out how to capitalize on something in, in a absolutely insane way that no one Chris is an incredible businesswoman either way the brand that Kim Kardashian has Mm -hmm. she's built that you know I've got respect for that but I never have thought of it in a way of like Kim is being Kim as a job that is what she does you know I know she has a reality show but that is that I think that's an important point that you just lit up that if people try to try to put that together in their brain like all the YouTubers who make vlogs of their lives that you watch, they're being themselves. Right. Well, I had written, you know, the reason why we keep searching for new forms of media, the reason why, you know, people are stopping to watch their television and they're seeking things yeah. on the internet is because media is democratized. Anyone can make YouTube videos. Anyone can tweet, yeah. you know, if you have a internet connection and whatever, that's besides the point. It's democratized so that anyone can do it. Yeah. So by saying that we don't want to be mass fed this entertainment anymore because it doesn't feel genuine to us you know somewhere along the line as we're getting more opportunities to be entertained we're finding regular people more entertaining than what you're telling me to be entertained Mm -hmm. by Mm -hmm. and the fact that i can turn on my computer and anyone can and i know this and i can you you know consume something that hits harder at home with Mm -hmm. me i can watch someone you know, eat a sandwich. I can watch someone's grocery store haul. To me personally, the more mundane your activity is, the more it entertains. A lot me. of people feel Trisha that way. motherfucking Paytas yeah. is the most entertaining person I think I can imagine yeah. because she is so unapologetically herself. Yeah. And I, I even wrote down here that even with vloggers and things like that, we're starting, you know, the fake viral videos and that sort of thing, we're starting to get a little exhausted of, you know, the the pre-planned, the story lining, like some of it is infiltrating our happy place. Yeah. The internet is supposed to be this honest platform yeah. where we go to get the realest really form well, of entertainment really well yeah. that we can get. Yeah. And, you know, when we see these fake things or, you know, have something that comes to mind are the vloggers Sam and Nia, I think, their names are and how they went through the big controversy controversy of them you know getting pregnant and then not being pregnant and it just felt planned to people and they weren't appreciative of it, mm-hmm. it, it that's an example although i don't know the truth 
in that or not, but it's an example of us being skeptical now even of what we're consuming online mm. and that we're forever searching for something realer, realer, realist until I feel like I'm you know, sitting next to you. Mm. And if anything, I think it's just going to point us back into human interaction. <laughs> the only way I'm no I know I can get a real experience is if I'm watching you live or I'm there live with you. Yeah. But it's interesting that the trend in in you know media has been that we're just searching for something so basic. Like I just am curious about you and your life, and it's what I want to look at all day, every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Um, what else was I going to say? Something else, something else, something else. Yes. Uh, okay. I had written that it's easy to chalk up our generation into being ego driven. Like, you know, saying, oh, all these kids on the internet, they just open up their computers and it's me, me, me all the time. Me, me, me. And I think that that's, you know, that's like saying that ego or that Kanye West just spews out ego driven drivel. Yeah. I think that that's an easy way to summarize our gen generation. I think what people making that point are missing is that we're actively seeking connections with other people because that's what we find entertaining and that's what we find meaningful that's resonating with us. Yeah. We're not opening our computers to feed our egos. We're opening our computers to have a relationship with people. To make a connection yeah. with other human yeah. beings. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at it from the surface, it looks like people are being very vain or self consumed. And I think that that is just such an easy backhanded way of you know fitting us into a box it's, but again back that's to it. back to the kardashian thing you can't necessarily fit a lot of people that are making a living on the internet into a box because we don't know what you do it goes against everything that we've been taught in terms of entertainment you need to be a singer or a dancer or an actor you need to want to be a director or you know some shit like that Otherwise, what's your end game? I don't understand. Because they're paving you, the path you, right now. They're, yeah. What What do you mean you want to be yourself yeah, for a living? Yeah. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. But look at Kim Kardashian, and look at. I mean, if you you know really expand your mind for a second, if you think about you know all new media in terms of people maybe being able to make a living off of just being themselves, look at the the path that she has set for us. It's huge. It's enormous. Yeah. It's endless. Yeah. You can do anything that you want to do. Yeah. You know, if you want to start a clothing line and, you know, go fucking have a reality show or do whatever the fuck you want yeah. for a living, yeah. you can. Well, the amount of, you know, reality shows and things of the such that have been created since that, endless, countless, ever growing. Right. And, and... I, it certainly wasn't the beginning of reality television. That was a whole. It was the beginning of that time. type of reality television. She is, in my opinion, one of the first people that was able to take a sort of, you know, I, I think within television it was sort of seen as this like easy flash in the pan. Like think of all the MTV stars that were on The Real World or Survivor or any yeah. of these shows and these networks and you know shows they use them they use them for their entertainment value and then we dump them and forget about them as human beings. Yeah. It's disgusting to me. And she is the kind of person that said, "No, you guys are going to find me entertaining until I'm not entertaining anymore. Yeah. And I don't care if it just means I'm going to cry about some shit. I'm going to get married. And, you know, it's easy to say that she's fame hungry, money hungry. All of those things are easy. What's harder to do is to understand the greater implications of what she's doing for the culture of entertainment. Mm -hmm. I think that she was one of the first people, in my opinion, that was able to take what was meant to sort of be quick and fast and easy, tolerable, you know, you turn on your beta waves and shut off and your brain doesn't even have to work sort, sort of entertainment and decided to turn it, in a, turn it into an empire of yeah, business. Yeah, empire is what I was going to say. Well, I, like, honestly, though, think of all of your favorite people on reality shows in the past that they just, you know. They're gone now. They, they just go back to their jobs and their lives, which is not a bad thing. And good for you if you're one of those people and have. There's no shame in that. But for maybe some of those people that wanted to continue doing that for a living, but that wasn't how it worked then. Yeah. You know? Now that's happening right before our eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're really good at being you. Why yeah. don't you just do that for as long as you can? Yeah.
And I don't want to see Kim Kardashian in movies. I don't want her to make songs. I feel like she dabbled in some stuff because she was getting so much pressure from people around her to be good at something mm. before she just said, fuck you guys. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. And also her entire family is now following in her footsteps of being themselves for a living. Yeah. And how fantastic is it? <laughs> it's awesome. I think it's pretty fucking fantastic. It's pretty cool coming from a place that I would say I do something pretty similar in a way. Yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah, again, it's like squinting in a painting. You got to sort of really put some dots that are on opposite sides of the room together to come to that connection. But I think that it's a, a worthy opinion of acknowledging that I think that maybe exists. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. That's fair, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're tired of being mass-fed entertainment. Uh, we define redefined what's interesting or truthful for mm -hmm. me that's watching people fucking smell Yankee candles and tell me what they smell like. I don't give a fuck, man. I know it's you in your bedroom. It's yeah. real. I'm drawn to that. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. There's no like swoops and like production. There's no storylines. There's no nothing. I just watch you in your room. I fucking love it. I can't get enough of it. I will, I will speak for myself. Um, uh, honestly, though, a lot of the... A lot of the times when I am struggling to find what I would view as interesting to vlog about, have a, a fun, cool, adventurous vlog, and I'm frustrated because at the end of the day I just have me around the house doing boring stuff, I'll upload and I'll be like, hey guys, sorry, it's kind of a slow vlog, and all, you know, all the top comments normally come in as like, this is what we want. We want the most yeah, boring shit. Yeah, I just want to know what your life That's, is about. Yeah, you I want to know day. what your thoughts are. I, and the more honest yeah. you are with me about that, the more I, I, I understand. Yeah. I don't have to relate to it. I don't even have to like it. Yeah. But I appreciate that it's an honest opinion. Well, and like, you know, um, this is kind of straying off. I'm not trying to change the subject. But I would say like three, four, I don't know, some, a long time ago, uh, I, I was, you know, I'm always an MMA fan. I've been an MMA fan for a while, but I was like hardcore for a while. I was a right. huge MMA fan. And they started doing these fight blogs. They were called fight blog. They were called blog week. And Dana White would basically have someone follow him around and basically vlog fight week for him and it was the highlight of my life mm. i loved fight week blog week that's what he would do at the beginning of the week he would say guys it's yeah fight there's, week, no, blog music. Week. there's like no music there's no music it's just you, but you're yeah. seeing behind the scenes you're seeing him talk to the fighters after they got knocked out you're seeing him talk to someone who's missing weight you're seeing all this stuff that you would never see and it's like now that vlogging is a thing people are seeing stuff that they would never see in people's lives you know it's, it's very similar, and I, I understand that attraction to it because right. I had it. Right, and I'm to relate to that point, the last thing that I wrote in my notes before I told you, Julian, I'm done writing notes, yeah. was why pretend to be something to tell a story when you can just tell your own? And be I think, your own story. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what's interesting about the Internet and about you know consuming that type of media is that we as consumers of media are finding value in watching a story unfold long term. Mm. Like I find it interesting to watch people grow and change, mm -hmm. have their opinions change, mm -hmm. uh, to just you know be a person. You're watching it's something that would never have existed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a this is a stretch right now, but I'm going to make a comparison. That because I didn't see it. The movie Boyhood didn't they shoot that over twelve years or something with the cast growing and actually changing? I don't know. And it won a bunch of awards. I I think what's interesting. I'm sure it's a wonderful film. I haven't seen it, but I think what's interesting about the internet and, and that film like broke grounds and it, it broke a lot of barriers for the film industry because no one had really made a film like that over that amount of yeah. time with the same cast. Yeah. I think what's interesting about the internet is that we get to see that on a regular basis. You get to see people grow and change and tell their own stories in their own words. And how you see they progression. It, it's a really interesting yeah. thing to You're watch. Right. You're right. You're right. You're watching. Like the shade hearts. When they do the throwbacks. Exactly. You're yeah. watching people tell their own stories. How yeah. incredible is that? Yeah. And it's And they don't need to wait however many years for the movie to be released. They get it every day. <laughs> and the library of their lives live on right. their channel. And I think that people that criticize the internet miss, you know, that point. They miss a lot of points. But I think most of it boils down to they don't fully understand why it's entertaining to mm -hmm. be yourself. Yeah why people want to watch people being themselves mm -hmm. and 
why people would want to be themselves. Mm-hmm. They they boil it down to all these kids are making a lot of money. It's narcissism. It's narcissism because it's foreign. They don't. It's they feeding don't their get ego. It. Yeah. Um, I, I just disagree a hundred percent, and I think that uh, Kim Kardashian has done a good job in it, in, on a different platform, but opening doors for what is possible for you being yourself for a living. I don't think that you know a lot of people would choose her path. That people want to be as famous as she is or do the same things that she does. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you should want to do the things that she does in her life. That's, you know, your choice or her choice or anybody's choice. I think it's interesting to see what is possible because no one has done that before. Yeah. In my opinion. For sure. I think that's fair. Unpopular opinion, Puffin. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm the Puffin next Are to you? you. I'm the Puffin right behind you. That's interesting. Well, uh, I feel be- like I've been on the same page as you this whole podcast, honestly. Well, yeah. I well, mean, and, and a lot of it is due to like you enlightening me. You know, like the first Kanye podcast, I learned a lot that I did not know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's a. It's an important thing to have your own opinions. I think when you you know, are shown all this stuff in the media and people tell you how you're supposed to think about a certain person yeah. or how you're supposed to think about, you know, the Kardashians or whatever. Yeah, and it's I think also, it's easy to form a, a mainstream opinion. Yeah, and it's, it's the group think thing, it's group think thing right. too also. Like, you know, for, for me, I go on Reddit all the time and today I just I didn't because there were too many Kanye jokes and all this shit and I'm just like, you right. know what? Fuck it. I don't want to well, do yeah, this. Well, yeah, and I think we can all appreciate jokes. It's not that. No, it's, it's not. The, it's, it's not about that, but it's, it's laugh- the, it's, at it's him. the group, yeah. It's the mob mentality. It's the everyone join in on this big joke that is Kanye West. And I was like, no, I'm not having that. Like, it's not. It's funny to me to watch Vine, you know, edits of Kanye. Yeah, sure, that's funny. I'll laugh at that. But the bigger picture of the fact that one of the most popular websites in the entire world uh, is filled with jokes shitting on Kanye, like, mm. no thanks. Good. Yeah, and and that's sort of why I've had it with laughing at the Kardashians as well. I think that that's. It, it's I'm not really laughing, and yeah. I'm, I, no one's really going to tell me to laugh. Well, who's really laughing? I mean, the Kardashians are the ones laughing. <laughs> like, they're, <laughs> they're the ones going to bed at night pretty happy. Yeah, and guess like, what hey, I got guys, to do at work today? Yeah. I went on a yacht in St. Bart's and hung out with my sisters, motherfucker. Like, make fun of me I all I lip-synced you want. on Snapchat all day long, and I'm a baller. My name is Kylie. Yeah. Kylie's a fucking boss. She's a man. fucking baller, and she presented an award last night. And her dogs fucking are fucking life. adorable. So Norman and Bambi. Just saying. Norman just and saying. Bambi. Her dogs are legends. Iggy's. They're like Peach and Kermit. But yeah, that's that's all that I wanted to talk about. I'm sure in my you know stream of consciousness. At no point did butter, you ever reach I'm that sorry. I just go blah 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 <laughs> onto all of you. Everyone I might have in this room is point, now dumb. But honestly, even when I watched that first. Kanye podcast, I was like, damn, I should have said this, I yeah, should have said that, yeah. I should have had more clear thoughts, well, but you, the fact of the matter is, once I get excited about something, it's very yeah. difficult for me to like yeah. make my thoughts I think that's happen. something that everyone kind of experiences, but you I Channel do, your inner Kanye and yeah. don't know what you're saying while you're saying it. Well, I don't, I don't hope think... Hope you get your point across. <laughs> yeah, well, you did prepare, and I also... I don't, I don't think that I'm going to be alone in thinking that this was a podcast that, um, at the very least was uh was enlightening you know even if you don't agree with what we said because i felt like you know well yeah that's that's why i, I like conspiracy theories i like conspiracy theories only because you don't have to buy into them i just want to know what other people think yeah tell me what your well, thought process is how you got there it's infinitely yeah and there's undoubtedly going to be me. people disagreeing with everything you do but the point is like just maybe shut your um mouth not like in a mean way but just like shut your like <laughs> the part of your brain that you're thinking of what to say and just open your ears for a sec and like just maybe just try to let new thoughts in unfiltredly and that's not a word but just listen you know and i think the first the first podcast made me really excited to come back and do this podcast Mm -hmm. and i think it went well i was obviously excited to hear what you said and i think a lot of other people will be um but as always guys leave a comment let us know your thoughts and um we uh we can even do a part three. Like there's never gonna be a shortage of things to talk about when it comes to Kanye. Yeah, we'll or wait Kim a little and, while. We'll yeah. wait until some more stuff happens. Yeah, maybe in twenty twenty. Probably sooner though. Probably sooner. Probably sooner. But um good podcast. Cool podcast.
Good well, thoughts. Thank you, thank you to Bowl and Branch for sponsoring this podcast. Check yes, them out, thank please. Thank you, Bowl and Branch. Bowlandbranch.com and enter Jenna Julian as your product code because you're a special person now. You have a product code, <laughs> all right? And you get 50 bucks off your sheets. Okay, thank you, Bowl and Branch. And uh, we'll see you guys next week for another podcast. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, friends. Be nice to each other in the comments or else. Or else. Or else I'm going to come in there and remind you what they are saying. <laughs> All right, there you go. Bye. Good? Yeah, unplug, you good? Yeah, can we take a break before we do the next yes. one?